In 2019, I started a new series that I called Holy Grail Skincare, the products I would immediately repurchase if all my skincare disappeared overnight. It is basically my ideal skincare routine, the basics I wouldn't want to be without, and every year I take stock and see if something has changed compared to the years before. So let's get into it. Did I discover any new skincare in 2021 that made it into my Hall of Fame? If you're new here, welcome! I'm Dr. Anne, a physician passionate about skincare and well-aging. We will go through it step by step and start with cleansers. The first one is one that already made an appearance last year, the Inkylist Old Cleansing Balm. It is like a balm cleanser in a tube rather than a pot, gets rid of makeup and soothes my skin, especially in winter. Great to use with tretinoin as well. I'm also a huge fan of oil cleansers, I prefer them over balms in summer, and the Skin 104 Madagascar Cantella Light Cleansing Oil has been the one I reach for over and over again. Yes, my initial video was a sponsorship, but this one isn't. It is just a beautiful oil cleanser. Kind of hard to get and on the more expensive side though, so let's see if I find a replacement with time. New in my favorite list is another one from the Inky List, their Fulvic Acid Cleanser. Non-stripping, refreshing and the favorite of my husband. It doesn't really get rid of my makeup completely, so I either pair it with one of the others or use it in the mornings or on non-makeup days. Toners and face mists. Again, toners and face mists are not an essential step, but for me one that I enjoy and that help me lie hydration, which is why they are part of my ideal skincare routine. The first one has been on this list ever since I started it. It is the Caudalie Grape Water. It is just grape water, which supposedly has a few more antioxidants, but I love it mostly because of its incredibly fine mist. I can use it in between skincare steps without having the other products drip off, and it's also perfect during the day, as it is so fine it does not disrupt your makeup at all. Last year I mentioned the Purito Centella Unscented Toner as a favorite and with my continuous exploration of Korean beauty discovered that indeed the toners found there are outstanding in terms of hydration. Right now I'm using the Vergreen Nature Mucin Toner but the one that I would immediately repurchase is not a K-Beauty one but the Geek and Gorgeous Liquid Hydration one. It does not only offer hydration but also 5% penthenol known for its soothing properties. Serums. In the serum category you will find two new ones as well as a bunch of old favorites, so let me quickly talk you through this quite extensive selection. I decided to ditch all the ones that only offer hydration as I tend to prefer as little steps as possible these days. Non-negotiable though is a vitamin C serum and it will not come as a surprise to regular viewers that here the Geek and Gorgeous Seagull Serum is the one. I discovered the brand and the serum at the beginning of 2021 and I'm a huge fan ever since. Geek and Gorgeous also makes my current favorite chemical exfoliant, the Perfectly Clear Serum, that replaced the discontinued one from The Ordinary. Their Stressless Serum gets an honorable mention as well, although it didn't manage to dethrone my long-standing favorite hydrating and calming serum the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Recovery Complex. I do get that many aren't willing to spend that much money though, so I wanted to share both. The next honorable mention goes to my beloved Zellens Power D treatment drops that don't seem to be available anymore. I have the Zellens Power D Fortifying and Restoring Serum that is supposed to be the replacement, but I haven't tested enough to see if the new version has earned a place in my Hall of Fame yet. Come back next year for the conclusion. And as last one in this category, the Tan Lux Super Glow Hyaluronic Acid Serum that I use if my skin needs a pick-me-up, as it is the only self-tan I can apply without ever getting streaky or patchy. Eye creams. In the category of eye creams, nothing has changed. I still love the Inkylist Caffeine Eye Cream for the mornings and the Murad Retinol Youth Real Eye Serum for nighttime. Moisturizers. For moisturizer, I have an old one, the Inkylist Peptide Moisturizer, with its amazing packaging and texture that is growth for winter, and the two new ones, both of which come from the K-Beauty side of things. The first one is the Skin 104 Madagascar Centella Soothing Cream, 
A lightweight gel that works amazing in the summer and provides intense hydration without ever feeling heavy. The second one is the Vergreen 730 Daily Moisture Cream that has a minimalistic formulation and a texture that works perfectly year-round for my skin, but especially as a buffer before treating oil. Sunscreen. For sunscreens, I have two that quickly earned a permanent place in my routine. The Garnier Ombre Solaire and the H Super UV SPF 50 is the perfect everyday option because of its hydrating texture and very sensible price. It adds too much glow for my taste and can, when paired with the wrong stuff, sometimes spill, but at that price point I am willing to forgive all that and happily reach for it on office days. If I do spend a longer time outdoors, however, I want something that will not pill no matter what. And here I reach for the Heliocare 360 Water Gel SPF 50. I much prefer the texture and finish of this one, but for something you wear as much as you do with sunscreen, the price difference definitely influences how often I reach for it. And it is way harder to get for me. I need to order it online rather than just grab a bottle when I'm shopping for toilet paper. Hair care. Now for the hair, the last category, we're almost done here. I can only repeat my love for Olaplex. I still use and love the number 3 Hair Perfected, number 4 Bond Maintenance Shampoo and number 5 Bond Maintenance Conditioner, all of which would have featured last year as well if I already had included the category hair back then. New in is the Olaplex number 7 Bonding Oil that not only offers the usual hair oil benefits, but also heat protection. And to also add something more affordable, I still faithfully apply the Inkylist Hyaluronic Acid Hydrating Hair Treatment all over after washing it, and I vow it helps reduce frizz even if air dried. Now I quickly did the math, and if I actually had to buy all that at once, it would set me back 441.77 euro. Only the favorites, not the honorable mentions. That is a lot, especially considering that 130 euro is hair care only. Good thing my stash is still here. What does your ideal routine look like and how much would it cost to repurchase it all at once? Tell me in the comments below. I will link to more videos you might find interesting on the screen and add links to my Instagram blog and Patreon account in the description box. See you soon. Bye.